Now, what we're really interested in, that's just the sort of underpinnings of how we constructed it and how we decided what the subject matter was because we sort of tested it a bit. Now we're going to talk about how we promote it. And in a sense, this is a sort of summary of a lot of the stuff that Lisa and I have been talking about. You effectively have got a set of source media which actually where you actually create the materials that are going to drive traffic to your site. The great thing about all these things like Twitter and Facebook and Academy and your blogs and your YouTube channel is they're all very easy to hook together. Two and a half years ago, when we first started doing Punch Above Your Weight, we used to have to tell people about RSS. Although this all uses RSS technology, we don't have to bother about that now because it's all enabled. You just say, I want to send this to my Twitter feed, I just want to send this blog to my Twitter feed, and I want the Twitter feed to be routed both to Facebook and to LinkedIn. So that you can build quite a powerful presence quite quickly by sort of basically putting things on YouTube, by putting WordPress blogs, by writing things on Academy, you stick them through your Twitter feed, it goes into Twitter and then it gets rooted to all these places that affect the organic search and makes it easier for people to find your site. So we kind of say there's a source medium where you create stuff, a carrier medium which takes the, that takes the materials you've created and roots them to where you actually want them to end up. So it means that if you do this stuff in an intelligent way without spending too much time on it, you can really build quite a substantial presence quite quickly. I mean, we tend to talk about ELF, Academy, Facebook and LinkedIn as the kind of tools that are easiest for you to use, although you don't underestimate the power of YouTube. This basically just sort of tells you uh, a little crib sheet, you know, of, of how they actually operate in terms of profiles, what their primary use is, um, who the typical users are and what the connection style is. But they all have different functions. LinkedIn is very good in a sort of business to business way, as Lisa was saying, for maintaining a professional network. Facebook, with the sort of power of the fan page, gives you a means of actually sort of building up quite a lot of exposure for your blog. I'll tell you about what I did with this particular project in a tick. But this just basically gives you a, a review of the projects. In fact, if you want a copy of these slides afterwards, if you just leave me a business card, I'll sort of send them to you. Because on that point, sorry, I But I think one of the things that is important is, and this came out of a, a, a big chunk of research that Lisa and I did for Business Networking International, BNI, which is a sort of breakfast networking club, is that the most successful people are very good at integrating online and offline activity. One of the things that makes Academy a good place to work is that you can build up an online presence in it by getting to know people online and then you can meet them offline it actually sort of organises so that you can operate in both mediums. And that's very important. LinkedIn and Facebook tend not to do that so much. I mean, it's true that you can basically create events on Facebook and invite people to it, but it doesn't sort of have a formal underpinning, underpinning networking organisation structure to back it up. So you should be thinking in terms of really getting the most out of this to be able to link your online and your offline activity. So... Coming back to what we put actually in the Intelligent Garden, this is basically a blog, so content is important. So I've basically done things like book reviews, product reviews, we talk about vegetables and recipes, we talk about pictures and videos, there's a basic science course, there's some topical stuff about what's going on in the garden. We illustrate some of the principles with things that we're actually doing in the nursery at the moment. Like I just did an article two or three days ago about propagation. We've got all of our seeds on a great long propagation bench at the moment, and it just sort of adds life to the blog. You know, I'm, I'm sort of fortunate that I have a lot of raw material to make this story with, but you just want to make it as varied as you can. If I basically did nothing but put scientific articles up day after day, people would get bored with it. But if you basically put one in every sort of week or ten days, interspersed with other things which are actually more about growing things or examples of what's going on in the garden, it's more interesting. And then, of course, we've we have topical tips like sort of saying uh, don't do anything this weekend it's too wet to go on the garden 
So, these are the kind of things that you can do. And this is the sort of self-organisation that I was talking about. You can't probably read those from there, but these are all the categories of the posts. So we've got things like useful tools and products, useful techniques, this week's tip, book and DVD reviews, our philosophy, which there isn't very much of at the moment, plant science course and garden pictures, which I, you know, if I go around Wakehurst's place and take a few snaps on the phone, that's where they go. And then on top of this, you've got the actual individual pages, which have got more in-depth stuff about how plants grow and what they need, you know, examples of how to sort of stretch the season and uh, a certain amount of trying to sort of uh, describe the products that we're trying to sell. And this basically just shows how the, uh, the, the I really only started doing, doing sort of serious blogging on this actually just after Christmas. So you can see that those are the, um, you know, the, the day that you put a post up, you get quite a spike and then the next day is not so great. But as time goes on, you know, the, 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 the big spikes get, uh, 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 have not been getting any bigger, but the intermediate spikes are getting larger. So there is actually some evidence of a, of a growing trend of readership there. So how